Welcome to the first in a series of introductory videos for the Solid Can CNC programming software. Today's topic is the global settings of the software. These are the settings that will set the defaults for various options within the software. You will set these settings before you actually program your parts. Uh, the purpose of these videos is for new users and prospective users to get a handle on the basics of the software. So that's why we'll start with the defaults that will dictate how you actually do your, your tool paths and such later on in the software. So to start, we will go to Tools, Solid Cam, Solid Cam Settings. This window here is a listing of the global settings for the software. And we'll begin with user directories. Um, these are the addresses where the various subfolders or parts that you're working on are kept while you're working on, on the software. So uh, these are the default locations. You can see here, that in particular for CAM parts, this is where your parts, as you're working on them, once you finalize them, they will be kept. Uh, and you can browse to those addresses as simply as you would with any other Windows operating software. Basically, you would just click on Browse, find the folder, and select it. Okay. Next up is the units. The units you're working in, you can choose either metric or inch. Now, you choose them here as the default, but when you open up a new CAM project, basically you'll have the option again to choose between metric and inch because you're not always most likely gonna use the same units. Um, that being said, once you choose that at the beginning of the creation of a project, that will be the units you're, you'll, you'll be stuck with as you continue to work on the part. Okay, now uh, following that is the default CC controller. Now, essentially what this is, is a listing of the post-processor files available to you from your library. And you can see that for each option, you actually have the default list or the post files that you would receive from our post team. The list is here for you to choose as the default, meaning that if I were to open up, for instance here, a new milling project, I would choose the post processor that I would like to automatically be loaded. Now, when I open up a new CAM project as I go along with each one, I can choose a different uh, post processor as I go, depending on which machine in my in my shop floor I'll be using. Uh, but this is just the default, so that you don't have to actually do an additional click when you open up new CAM project. Uh, and you can see that we've broken it down for the milling, the turning, the mill turn, and the wire. So you can set a default for each one of those. Okay, next is the G code. So in addition to your SOLIDWORKS design file, your solid cam file, you're gonna have a NC file, the G code that you're gonna to wanna to send to your machine. And you have the option here of choosing where you'd like to save that. So it can be saved in the same directory as we saw in user directories, the cam part directory, where you're saving that solid cam file, or any other directory you see as an option here. Um, if your company specifically has a location uh, that it, all the NC files should be kept, Imagine you have maybe a, a networked CNC and it needs to look at a particular directory. You could just click on in uh, G, G code directory and then browse for that like you would any other address. Okay. Uh, to review the G code file before you actually, uh, actually put it in that folder and send it out to the machine in any way or load it onto USB, you could use any text editor or uh, NC code edit. Um, viewing software you have available to you, and you would link to that here as well. Again, these three dot button, that is another browse. You can browse to where that software is being kept, and that will be the software that automatically opens up when you post your G code. Okay, CAM part. Uh, basically, the CAM part is controlling the type of file you're creating and defaults associated with that. So let's go through that quickly. Uh, so when you first open up a CAM project, you have the option of using internal versus external. And the difference is just the relationship of your CAM project, your solid CAM file, with the original SOLIDWORKS file. If you were to choose internal, any solid CAM sketches, any, any additional geometries you add to the file would be put into a folder for uh, the use of, of the CAM programming. And that would be in an otherwise SOLIDWORKS part the same part, you don't actually leave it. And that's why you can see the extensions are the same. <clears throat> if you were to use external, what happens is you create an external solid cam file. And that allows you to bring in further solids for assemblies. Essentially what you've done is you opened up uh, a new assembly file that you can add in your own sketches, your own solids. And that is a separate file for you to work on. Uh, you actually work on what we call the design model. It's a perfect copy of the original SOLIDWORKS model. So you can make changes to that model to make the part more machinable if you so choose. And that also maintains ISO 9000 as well. 
Okay, going down the list here, uh, you can work in compressed mode or uncompressed mode. Essentially, uh, with an external file, you could either have that single PRZ file, which would be a compressed file, which has all the files into one file. It's very good for uh, a PDM software, where you have one file, you're just checking in and out. If you were to uncheck that box and work in uncompressed mode, all you would see is, again, you'd see the PRT file, and then an associated folder with the same name that has all those files that otherwise would have been compressed into a single file. Okay. Going down the list, we'll go to automatic CAM part definition. You'll notice I have them unchecked, but uh, let's go through these real quick. So again, if I had set that default CNC controller, like I did in the third option, I could check that box there, and I wouldn't even need to choose the, uh, the post processor I'm gonna use. A lot of these are set to automatically choose the things that you end up choosing. Now, the reason I have these unchecked is generally um, you are working on different parts each time, so they're not necessarily gonna be a common uh, G54, a common stock, a common target. Now, if you do have something that's common, you tend to use the same stock size for different parts, or you wanna skip a couple of steps in terms of defining your target and whatnot, there are checkboxes here for those individual choices. But again, we're, what we're looking at here is a default global setting for your part. So if there's something you'd like to skip over, you could check the box here and it would automatically do that for you. For instance, if you were to automatically define your stock, or later, when if you do choose the box definition, it's the same thing. If we go to stock definition, if I were to choose the box definition, um, we will, get the, we will go through that in the second video, but basically this is where uh, your default offsets for that box stock definition would come from. So you have, <clears throat> I have it set to zero in the XYZ direction. Okay, let's skip down to miscellaneous. And a few things in miscellaneous, you'll see that you actually um, see that there's an auto save every 10 minutes. Now, uh, SolidCam is constantly saving no matter what you're doing. And again, we'll, we will see that when we get into the programming video. There's always a save icon. You're always saving after everything you do. But there is also the autosave. And you can set the autosave to automatically save um, in increments of, in this case, by default, 10 minutes. But you can change that. Also, if you're using any kind of DNC software, this is where you would browse to that DNC software. Um, once you've made all the changes you see here, and you'd like to share these settings amongst the rest of your company, the other programmers on your team, you actually can save your settings to, a, to an e, or an REG file, and then share that amongst your team. And all they would need to do is open up their SolidCam settings, and then upload the settings, and then browse for that, that file wherever you've put it on your network. And then once you click OK, you'll have saved those settings, and then going forward, you will have those settings as your defaults. So uh, that concludes the first video for the global settings of SolidCam. Uh, as you're going along with these videos, if you need any additional help, you can always call the main tech support line at 1-866-975-1115, extension two. And uh, we can help you out with anything that, uh, that you need. But uh, otherwise, um, this concludes the first video and uh, look forward to the other series of videos that cover the, uh, the main topics of, of programming SolidCam. So thank you for watching the video.